we saw in the previous video how you could extend the reach of simple known limits via the limit laws to handle more complex expressions. And yet, there are some expressions which, no matter what order you use the limit laws in, you'll still get an indeterminate form. And that leads to this situation where we need to do algebraic simplification before we apply the limit laws. I'll just illustrate this with a couple of examples. Let's clean up some space so that we've got room to write. And let's try to find the limits of each of these expressions. Now, notice first that if I were to use the quotient limit law, I would get infinity over infinity. I would get an indeterminate form. And so the first thing we're going to do, the first algebraic simplification we're going to do is to factor out the largest power that we see in the numerator. And that would be x squared. So we write this as 1 plus 3 over x. Now we're going to factor out the largest power that we see in the denominator. That is also going to be, in this case, x squared. Now notice this is a slightly different use of factoring than you've probably seen before because Typically, you'd factor out the largest common factor, and that would be an x. Here, we're factoring something different. We're pulling out the largest power, not the largest common factor, but the largest power. And you may ask, well, how can I pull an x squared out of a term that just has one x in it? The answer is simply that if you redistribute this, you'll see that x squared times 3 over x does in fact yield 3x. So it's a legal algebraic manipulation. The value of it will become evident as we are able to determine an exact limit here. We factored out the x squared on top. Now, before we take any limits, we're going to cancel these x squareds. Okay. Now we're just left with the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 3 over x and 2 minus 5 over x squared. Now we can go on our merry way and apply the limit laws. We apply the quotient limit law first, and then the sum limit law, then the difference limit law down here. We'll again apply the, apply the quotient limit law here and we get down to known limits. The limit of this is going to be 1. The limit of this will be 0. So let's just write that out. That goes to 1. I'm sorry. That goes to, let's get this right. Limit of 1 as x goes to infinity is just 1. This goes to 2. And this goes to 0. And so what we get in the end is simply limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 0 over limit as x goes to infinity of 2 plus 0. And that's, of course, going to be 1 half. Let's try another. Now, again, the principle that we're applying in every situation is we're finding the largest factor of x in the numerator. In this case, that's x. So I'll write it like this. And that's 1 plus 6 over x, factoring out that largest factor. Here we'll factor out the x cubed, and we'll get 2 plus 1 over x square, uh, squared plus 4 over x cubed. 
Okay, well we can cancel out one of these powers of x. So this turns into x squared. And as we further break this down, and now that we've done the algebraic simplification, we can apply the limit laws, the quotient limit law, the product, the sum limit laws. We're going to get individual limits of 1 here. This will go to 0. This will go to 2. This goes to 0. This goes to 0. And so we get... Uh, we get uh, 1 over 2x squared. And that limit is going to be 0. Let's try this last one. We'll take out the largest power we see in the numerator. That's x to the fourth. then this becomes 1 over 3x cubed. Here we'll take out the x squared. That becomes 4 plus 1 over x. Again, I'm not going to write out limit in each case, but notice that the key is to factor out the largest power in the numerator, and then separately factoring out the largest power in the denominator. This x squared is going to cancel with this x4. That gives us x squared. We can see that this will go to 1 plus 0, this will go to 4 plus 0, and so what we'll have eventually is x squared over 4. That limit is going to be infinity or it does not exist. Now some of you are at this point saying, gee, I've seen all this before in pre-calculus, we were just taught the three simple rules. If the highest power in the numerator and the denominator is the same, then the limit, or the, vertical, the horizontal asymptote, is just the ratio of the coefficients. If the highest power in the denominator is larger than the highest power in the numerator, then the answer is zero. And if the highest power in the numerator is larger than the highest one in the denominator, then the answer is infinity. So you might ask, well, why couldn't I have just used those three rules I learned in pre-calc? And I suppose the answer is this. First, calculus is a little more sophisticated in what we're looking at, and so it's important to be able to prove these results. We've essentially just sketched out how we would prove these three results that you were simply taught to accept on graphical evidence and intuition alone. And secondly, practicing this algebraic simplification technique before we take a limit will prove much more important and much less trivial when we move to the next section of limits at finite values.